I had a comment on a recent video that I posted, and it was about uh, when I was talking about the idling in the N14 and or M11. They both kind of idle the same, same, e same ECM type of hardware back in those days. And the comment was that uh, when they were, this uh, person was working on a truck that had a bad idle, rough idle, and when he put it into the single cylinder cutout test, the idle got real smooth, and he was wondering what that was about. So uh, I had noticed that back in the day, and speaking with an engineer, he said, when we're working to achieve a smooth idle, when the engine runs down the road and there's no diagnostic tool connected to it, by that I mean Insight in this case, the engine will run off of what's called double pulse when it's looking uh, to control the idle. When you put the uh, engine into single cylinder cutout mode, you go back to the old original single pulse idle. Single pulse, pulse idle was a very primitive idle logic. It basically fired the injector every so many counts of the EPS uh, when it was looking at the holes in the camshaft. And you'll see a picture of that in a little bit. So then double pulse, it would also, of course, look at those holes, but it took into account other things like engine RPM, surging. Uh, when I say surging, as time went on, sometimes some injectors would fire a little heavier than others, and your idle speed would actually be going up and down. So they tried to take that into account with the double pulse to calm the idle down so you'd have less complaints about idle. Uh, an engineer told me the N14s and M11 Select and Select Pluses were never designed to idle good. They were designed to run good, and they did. Uh, idle was a necessary evil for the engines, and so they, they made it as good as they could get it with the technology that they had. But that was the difference between the single and the double pulse uh, when it comes to idle. I've got a couple pictures of the EPS and where the EPS is mounted in an N14 and it's the same place in an M11, basically just a couple inches difference. It's harder to get to on the N14 than it is on the M11 or ISM, early ISMs. And so uh, let's take a look. So here's a picture of an N14 Plus. It, a lot of guys call this a red top. That would be when you had 500 and up horsepower and 1850 torque. Uh, the engine came with red valve covers. It's just a symbol, if you will. And uh, you could also get chrome, by the way. You could order chrome if you had a full 525. The chrome covers are pretty nice looking. But anyway, you can see there's where the EPS is. It's under the air compressor and behind the oil pump. So they had a, a socket, cutaway socket that went over it. I bought one because it was, you had to have it to get those out. They were a real pain, especially if the, the engine was down in a frame rail, like on a, a constructor or something, like an auto car constructor or something like that. Uh, same basic place in an, in an M11. So this is an EPS. Now you see where I have old style end. If you look at the end of that, that round silver circle in the center is actually a magnet. That's about an inch and a half long. And there's uh, a coil of wire round to wound around it. And then a second coil of wire wound around it. So if one coil goes bad or shorts out, the engine could run off the second or backup coil. Over on the left where you see the plug, the orange represents the uh, leads for one coil. I call it the primary, and then the center two would be the secondary coil. And the ECM would automatically switch to whichever circuit gave it the best uh, results in terms of signal. And when you'd use your own meter uh, to check that, 
and you basically want it between 750 and 2,000 ohms. They average around 1,500. Usually one coil would be around 750 to 1,000 and the other would be around 1,200 to 1,800. Uh, the newest EPSs over back on the right would have the end closed. That aluminum, that blue aluminum can would come right over the end. And they did that because that black piece of, of plastic resin is what sealed oil from getting into that sensor. The oil would break down the shellac on the windings and then they'd short. They were never able to get this to seal properly long term. Uh, I used to always unplug the EPS, that black plug, when they come in, and when one would come in for anything. If I was working on it and if there was oil in that plug, I would tell the customer they needed a new EPS because I knew that eventually it was going to short out and cause them problems. So once they got the solid end EPS out, then that problem went away. They really weren't that much of a problem. Uh, okay, let's take a look at the gear now. So here's the back side of the cam gear. Uh, this is an N14. But the M11 is very similar. The gear is very similar. The teeth are a little different. And there you can see the pin that tells the uh, ECM it's at top dead center on number one cylinder. And when you shut this engine off, if that pin stops just after the EPS sensor, it will take two full revolutions before the engine can start because it has to see that pin once to know where it is and then the second time it sees it it starts firing injectors so if it stops just before that if that pin stops just before the EPS when you crank the engine it can start a whole 720 degrees of rotation sooner uh, now an interesting uh, anomaly. Twice in my uh, life as a technician, I went on road calls to look at M11s that had strange problems. And what the problems were, were when the customer would go down a long hill, when he got to the bottom, the engine would stall. He'd coast up the other side of the hill, shut it off, and then sometimes it would start again, sometimes it wouldn't. And so uh, this particular customer was a big fleet, and they had put in EPSs and ECMs and everything else. So uh, the guy called me up before I was scheduled out there and said, is there anything you want us to do? Because they had it in their shop, and I said, Pull the front cover off. Uh, it was an M11 in this case. So I went out there and I took a great big pry bar with me. And so he goes, okay, what do you think? And I went up to the engine. I stuck the pry bar behind the gear and I pulled as hard as I could and the gear popped off. And he almost fell over when he saw that. And uh, twice I saw only on M11, the cam gears lose their press fit to the camshaft and if you really put some oomph on them they'd slide away from the EPS and what ha was happening was when the engine was hot that press fit was really loose and as long as they were running the angle of the gear teeth on the M11 pulled the gear against the cam and it kept running but when they would let off going down a hill when they let off and there was no more thrust, the gear would move away from the EPS far enough that the engine couldn't see it and it shut off. And there was no faults. So uh, there was a hot tip for you guys if you ever have an M11 that has that problem. Thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe. See you next time.